As we continue exploring all things respiratory anatomy, today I'd like to talk about the lymphatic drainage of the thorax. I have already covered this topic in a virtual reality video that I filmed during the COVID-19 remote learning period, but I wasn't very happy with the image quality, so I thought, why not reimagine it as a lightboard video instead? For those of you new to my YouTube channel, I am Dr. Nikki, and I love drawing out complex content in a simple manner. The learning outcomes for this lightboard video are to be able to describe the location of major lymph node groups of the thorax, and be able to summarize the efferent drainage of the lungs, pleura and thoracic wall, all the way from the plexuses to the major lymphatic ducts. Just a heads up, this is a very advanced topic. So individual lymph node groups are quite difficult to see in prosected material or on your plastic anatomical models, but a working knowledge of them will be very important in the staging of lung cancer and the investigation of metastatic spread. For the purposes of drawing, I'm going to start with our deep structures and then work our way to the surface. You will recall at all times there is a small amount of lymph fluid located within the tissues of our lungs in order for gaseous exchange to occur when we're breathing. Remember that there is a rich supply of bronchial and pulmonary vessels within each lobe and segment. Therefore, fluid from capillaries is continuously leaking out into our lung parenchyma. You will remember that one of the roles of the lymphatic system is to remove excess fluid and return it back to the circulatory system. Therefore, lymph from the lung is going to be emptied into two sets of lymphatic vessels or anastomotic plexuses. These are called the superficial subpleural lymphatic plexus and we also then have the deep lymphatic plexus of the lungs. The vessels for the superficial subpleural plexus are located immediately deep to the visceral pleura. You will remember that the visceral pleural layer is in direct contact with the lung parenchyma, so these vessels are going to be located in that peripheral lung tissue. As you can see on our diagram, the parietal pleura is represented by the white outline of our lung. I've drawn then immediately deep to that the outline of the lung parenchyma. And based on your anatomical knowledge, you know that the visceral pleura is attached to this layer. Therefore, the edges and the margins of the fissures of the lung are circulated by the vessels from the superficial plexus all the way to reach the hilum of the lung to which they're going to drain. These superficial vessels are responsible for draining lymph from the periphery of the lung as well as the visceral layer of pleura. The deep lymphatic plexus is located in the bronchial submucosa and peribronchial interstitium. This drains the root of the lungs, including all of the bronchial tree, pulmonary vessels, and the connective tissue septa. The vessels from the deep plexus can run along the bronchi and pulmonary vessels in the direction towards the hilum of the lung. Eventually, all of the lymph then coming from the lung parenchyma drains to our pulmonary lymph nodes. So we can see these are located around the secondary and tertiary segments of the bronchial tree, and then eventually they're all going to course towards that hilum of each of the lungs. Therefore, in the hilum of the lungs, we have a couple of lymph nodes. We can sometimes see these on prosected or dissected material appearing as black little blobs, and this is going to all receive lymph then from that superficial plexus and then the end point of that deep lymphatic plexus. The efferent drainage then from the bronchopulmonary or hilar lymph nodes is going to be to the tracheobronchial nodes. As the name implies, the tracheobronchial nodes are located around the tracheal bifurcation at the level of the carina. These are going to be superior to the splitting into the main pulmonary bronchi and will receive all of the lymph from the lungs. There are two sets of tracheobronchial nodes, the inferior tracheobronchial nodes, also called the subcarinal nodes, and the superior tracheobronchial nodes. These are going to be immediately superior and lateral to the carina.
The inferior tracheal bronchial nodes will receive lymph from the lower lobes of the lungs, as well as the middle and posterior mediastinum. These are located, as I mentioned, inferior to the crena and will send lymph to the superior tracheobronchial nodes. There is a tendency too for vessels from the upper lobes to pass their lymph directly to these superior tracheobronchial nodes. From here, all lymph will drain superiorly into the paratracheal lymph nodes, whose efferent vessels will then unite with the parasternal and anterior mediastinal nodes, which we'll talk about in a minute, to form a major trunk that is going to be of the utmost importance, that is the bronchomediastinal trunk. This is located along the course of the brachiocephalic vein, for your reference. Therefore, ultimately, all of the lymph drain from the thoracic wall and viscera, including the trachea, the heart, the mediastinum, as well as medial parts of the mammary glands, will end up at the bronchomediastinal trunk. This trunk will then eventually drain into the right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct on the left, at a point where they empty into the brachiocephalic vein at the angle or junction formed between the internal jugular vein and the subclavian veins. You will recall from my other videos that the subclavian trunk drains the axilla and breast, while the jugular trunk drains the head and neck. These are also then going to drain into those major ducts at this location as I've drawn in green. So now that we've covered the lymphatic drainage of the lung tissue and the trachea, I'm now going to superimpose some of our great vessels on our diagram. So it's not exactly the prettiest of superimposition of great vessels, um, but I think it will do for the purposes of this video. Let us now consider some of our external structures, such as the parietal pleura, the chest wall, and the diaphragm. So the lymphatic drainage of these structures are going to be surface dependent. Thus, the anterior half of the pleura, the anterior intercostal spaces, anterior half of the diaphragm, and the medial breast will drain directly to the parasternal lymph nodes. These are a group of four to five nodes located in the anterior ends of the intercostal spaces. And these are going to course with the internal mammary artery. The brachiocephalic nodes, as I've mentioned, are going to be located at the point where the left and right brachiocephalic veins confluence together to then form that superior vena cava. If we then consider the same structures but their posterior aspects, the posterior aspects of the parietal pleura, as well as the posterior chest wall will drain to the posterior intercostal lymph nodes. These are located in the intercostal spaces near the head and neck of the ribs. So I will now draw this on the left side of our diagram. The efferent drainage of the posterior intercostal nodes in the lower 4th to 7th spaces will empty into the abdominal confluence of lymph nodes or the start of the thoracic duct. The upper spaces, however, will drain directly into the thoracic duct on the left-hand side or the posterior mediastinal lymph nodes on the right. This now brings us to our posterior mediastinal nodes. The posterior mediastinal nodes can be found around the azygous system of veins and the esophagus, posterolateral to the vertebral column. These are going to drain the posterior mediastinum, the posterior aspects of the heart and pericardium, the esophagus, as well as the posterior nodes of the diaphragm, or our posterior phrenic nodes. 
The posterior phrenic nodes are located on the posterior aspect of the crura of the diaphragm. If we're thinking about the efferent drainage of the posterior mediastinal nodes, this is going to predominantly be towards the thoracic duct, but it can also drain lymph into the superior or inferior tracheobronchial lymph nodes, remember at that point of the bifurcation of the trachea, depending on the location that lymph is coming from. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the International Association for the Study of Lung Cancer tends to divide the thoracic lymph nodes into 14 stations in the context of oncology staging as well as thoracic surgery planning. Therefore, it is not the purpose of this video to go into the specific stations, but rather to use the defined landmarks to assist us with locating some of these nodes. If we firstly refer to station one, which is going to be the equivalent of the highest thoracic lymph nodes. These are going to be located in that supraclavicular zone around the level of the apex of the lung. And these include the nodes of the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes, our supraclavicular and our sternal notch lymph node groups. Above the upper border then of the aortic arch, approximately at that T3 vertebral level, and below the clavicle, we now have our upper paratracheal lymph nodes. And these are going to represent the nodes of the superior mediastinum. This also includes our prevascular or retrotracheal nodes, which are going to be behind the trachea. If we then move just below that upper margin of the aortic arch, and if we had to draw a horizontal line approximately intersecting the upper lobar bronchus, in this space we'll then find those superior tracheobronchial lymph nodes. The next zone then of assessment is going to be the aortic lymph nodes. This is going to be where we find the subaortic nodes, which are in the aortopulmonary window, and these are situated just lateral to that ligamentum arteriosum. We also have our peraortic, which are also called the ascending aorta nodes, that are located on that upper margin of the aortic arch, just a little bit lateral to the ascending aorta. You will recall it's also in this space that we have those brachiocephalic lymph nodes, and then if we were thinking about just moving a little bit down onto that heart surface, we would also find the anterior mediastinal lymph nodes, but I'm not going to depict it on this diagram. In the inferior mediastinum, we then revisit our subcarinal or inferior tracheobronchial nodes. And we also find some nodes either side of the esophagus, and these are termed our paraesophageal lymph nodes. Under this classification, our N1 nodes are going to be our bronchopulmonary or our hilar lymph nodes, as well as the pulmonary lymph nodes. This is also going to then include that superficial and deep plexus of the lungs. Finally, I just want to cover some of the other afferent drainage associated with the bronchomediastinal trunk. We've already mentioned that the paratracheal and the parasternal lymph nodes will send their efferent drainage to the bronchomediastinal trunk. We also have contributions from the anterior mediastinal nodes and the posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. I hope that you've found this lightboard video informative. I know we've ended up with a little bit of a mess as the end result, but we've systematically stepped through the lymphatic drainage associated with the important viscera of the thorax, being the lungs. We've stepped through the lymphatic drainage of the tracheobronchial tree, our pleural layers, and then we've also covered some of the lymphatic drainage then of the chest, intercostal spaces, as well as the thoracic diaphragm. Thank you so much for watching this Lightboard video, as well as your continual support on my YouTube channel. I hope that these resources provide a simple and digestible way for you to learn complex and advanced anatomy, such as lymphatic system. And please do reach out to me directly if you have any content requests via my social media handles.